Okay, today we're going to be talking more about the normal distribution. So we found out previously that um, if we have a set of continuous data, and that we can, the curve, um, a curve graph can represent the probability distribution of a continuous random variable. So if we had some random variable x and it can be, we can have a, a curve in this shape <coughs> and um, this is called the probability density function or P, D, F. And um, if it has this shape, which so it's symmetrical about the, where this is the mean, where mu is the mean, and the variance is sigma squared. Very, just can't spell variance. And the variance is sigma squared. Um, this is the normal distribution. And, <clears throat> the normal distribution is um, something that props up um, quite frequently when we, we study probabilities of continuous data um, and it has some very interesting properties and we're going to start to explore those properties just now. Now, if we were to, we can actually find a function for this curve and the function is f of x equals... 1 over sigma the square root of pi to pi and then we take the exponential so e to the power um, exponential of minus x so whatever random variable we're looking at x minus mu which is the mean squared over 2 sigma squared for all real values of x. So this function is now defined purely on the parameters sigma and mu. Um, <coughs> Now we can, when we're describing, um, to describe a normally distributed random variable x, we're going to use the notation x is described by the normal distribution and its parameters are mu and sigma squared. So where sigma is the sigma squared is the variance. And it's just sigma would be the standard deviation. <coughs> um, so when you see this notation and you have the numbers in here. These numbers are the mean and the variance. Now, the probability that x takes a value between a and b so say we had a value A here and a value B here, it could be anywhere, <coughs> is equal to the area under the curve. So we have, we had, there's A, there's B, so this area here. So we can take our function, this 
f of x here. And so the probability that a is between, um, x is between a and b is going to be the integral to an a of b of f of x dx. Now let's look at this function. That is not a nice function to, um, <coughs> to be able to integrate. And in fact, we can't integrate it. Um, and we're going to find out, but we will find out that um, mathematicians have been able to um, to work out, and work out the integrals on this function and have created tables for us. So we're not going to be integrating that, that function uh, because it's quite hard to handle, um, <coughs> as you can see by just looking at it. Now, let's look at the properties of the normal distribution. So... So, properties and the probabilities that go with that. So, firstly, half of the values are less than the mean. So this tells us that the probability when x is less than mu is equal to the probability of x being less than or equal to mu and that equals 0 0.5. And <coughs> conversely, half of the values are greater than the mean. That just is logical. Um, so the probability that x is greater than mu is equal to the probability that x is greater or equal to mu, which is equal to 0.5. Now this is an interesting property. Approximately 68.26% of the values lie within one standard deviation. So if we were to take the pro probability that mu, mu minus sigma um, is less than or equal to x, or x is less than or equal to mu plus sigma, that equals 0 0.6826. Now, I'm going to draw a little... Um, I'm going to draw graphs of this just to make this seem clearer in a minute. Um, secondly, approximately 95.44% of values lie within two standard deviations. So the probability of mu minus 2 sigma to e equal to x less than or equal to mu minus 2 sigma is equal to 0 0.9544. And thirdly, approximately 99.72 of values lie within three standard deviations. So we're three sigma less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 
mu minus 3, sigma is 0 0.9972. So let's look at, let's make our mu equal to 0. And so mu is equal to 0. And we're going to make our standard deviations plus or minus um, 1. So this is going to be minus 1, plus 1. And this is our, so this here is mu minus sigma and mu plus sigma. So there is, so this is, this, the area under this between minus 1 and plus 1 will be the probability that x lies within the standard deviation. And let me just change the colour, I'll colour that in a different colour. Um, oh, it's not come up a different colour, there we go. So there's that, and this is, so that probability there, the area under here is 0 0.6. 826. Now, this means, so we'll draw another little curve. Again, we're going to just make it so that our value for mu, our mean, is 0. And here's our 1, for our sigma is going to be 1. So this is mu and this is mu plus sigma. And this tells us that So now if we wanted to think, let's put that probability there coloured in. <coughs> so if we wanted the probability of x being less than or equal to 1, then That's going to be so that's going to be a half of this value because if this is half of that is going to be colored in half times zero point six eight two six plus zero point five because if you think because of the symmet symmetrical nature of the normal distribution, the full area under the normal distribution is 1. Half of it is down this um, central point with the mean, so this area under this part is going to be a half, and this is going to be half the value of this. So here we get 0 0.8413. Which is equal to, also equal to the probability of x greater than or equal to minus 1. So if we had the opposite, destroy here. So we did minus 1 and we were thinking x is greater than, so this area. We can see by symmetry that that area and that area are the same. So x greater than or equal to minus 1 is the same as the area of less than or equal to 1. And this is going to be an important little fact <coughs> in a few minutes. Um, and let's do, shall we get rid of that? And we will, let me get another page up because I've run out of space. So... Might do this a bit bigger, so kind of these are meant to be symmetrical. So again, our mean is zero. This time we're going to do two standard deviations. So this will be minus two and two, and we're going to be interested in 
this area and we know from our properties of the standard deviation that that area under the curve is going to be 0 0.9544. So this is min mu, um, no, minus mu. So this is mu minus 2 sigma and this is mu plus 2 sigma. And we can also have Oops, that's a very wonky line. So let's do minus 2. Here's our 0. Let's get that bit coloured in. So if we wanted to... There we go. So here, if we wanted... So we know that the probability between 2, minus 2, that's very messy, and 2 is equal to 0 0.9544. So the probability that x is less than or equal to 2, it's the same, same um, argument here as we did before, is going to be half of this plus 0.5, which is equal to 0 0.9772, which is going to be equal to P is when X is greater than or equal to minus 2, which is what we've drawn here. Um, <clears throat> okay, now here's a wee problem. Mu is not 0 and sigma is not 1. <coughs> but it would be very useful if they were. So what we can do is we can perform a transformation on our random variable and we can put it into the standard normal variable and we denote that as z and so this has mean equal to zero and variance equal to one so if we have mu equals zero and sigma equals 1, and we put it into our equation for the um, probability density function, which I'll remind you of just now, f of x was equal to an exponential of minus x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared, we then get this. And we don't call it f of x, we call it phi, the Greek letter phi. Phi of z, because we're now dealing with, <coughs> with z as our standard normal variable. And phi is 1 over root 2 pi, the exponential of minus z squared over 2. Now, if we sketch this, we will get, these are values of z. A nice normal curve with mean zero and we have our, st our um, standard deviations one minus one and then 
two standard deviations, and so on and so forth. <coughs> um, now, because of the symmetry, values we can we, we can have values of x any z less than zero represents less than mean. And z greater than zero represents um, greater than mean. And for z greater than three and z less than minus three we have the phi of z is very close to, oh, not to three, to zero. So it kind of tapers away very close to zero. So once you get to z, the, 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 this will be minus three and three, this is very, very close to zero. Um, the area under is one. Um, <coughs> right, now, to find probability, the values of probability of z less than or equal to little z is the same as saying z, probability of z is greater than z. So that's an important fact to um, remember. Um, <coughs> and it comes out of the, the um, symmetry of phi. Now, the probabilities are compiled in tables because um, of their complexity. Some calculators, they might have a little button for phi of z and the inverse function of z might also be on these calculators but not all calculators have them um, but the, um, <coughs> there's mathematical tables and the tables are available in the exam um, they should be at the end of the textbook and they're also available online for you to use and we're going to have a wee look at how to do this just now so Let's look at this as a standard normal distribution function. And so let's say we wanted um, to find out um, the value for psi is zero point two seven four. So we go down the x value and we find zero point two. So here's zero point two here. Now we want to go to our so this is our two and now the next the next figure in the number is seven. So we've got 0 0.2, then we go to 7. And so we cross the reference these, so there is, so this is at 0 0.6, 0 0.6064. But we've got more figures after the 7. We've got 4 and we've got 1. So we go to the 4th figure. Well, that's not 1, that's the closing of the bracket. Um, so we go to the 4, so here's the 4. We come down and there's a 15. So I'm going to have to come off of this and so we'll, we'll, I'll just write down what we were looking for. We're looking for the value of phi uh, when, write it down here, 0 0.274, so wonky 2. 
So we found our value for point 2. So our value for point 2. Our value for 7. So it was 0 0.6064. So we'll write that down. So we've got 0 0.6064. So that was from our, we've got our, that was our 2, then to the 7, and now we need to get our 4. So we go to the 4 here, down to where it comes to the point 2 row, and we have a 15. So what do we do to the 15? It says add. So what we do is we add 15 to the last two digits. So it's 0. Point zero zero and then fifteen in these uh, um to these digits here and then we get zero point six zero four nine. So if you think about it tenths column, hundredths column, thousandths column and tens thousandths column. So th this is our thousandths and tenths of thousandths column for the add bit if you think about the decimal version so now if we want we can also find we could be given the probability of a function of, of something being this um, and we want to find the value of z so what you would do would do you would go the opposite so that would be like saying the inverse function of 0 0.6079. So this is the probability and you want to find for what value of z <coughs> this is a probability. So what you would do is you'd look for the number that's closest in the table and then back work it. But we'll do um, some examples of that. This so would be 0 0.274 if you did that. If you got on your calculator you're lucky. Right, let's look at an example. So given that z is a normal distribution, 0 and 1, find the probability that z is less than 1.23 and the probability that z is greater or less than 1.23. So it's useful to draw a little graph, a little picture to represent what's happening. So we've got our normal distribution and our value of z is here and it's 1.23 and we want the probability that's less than that. So it's this probability here and then this little value here, let's colour that in a different colour. And then this value for z is greater than. Okay, so we want to go back to our probability distribution table. And we want to look for um, z is 1.2. So here's 1.2 and now we want 1.23. So we go to the 3 and we get 0 0.8907 and because it's, it's only 1.23 we don't need to think about further down. It, it doesn't go to, to, to um, <coughs> more decimal places. So the probability that z is less than 1.23 is going to be equal to 0 0.8907. Now, for the probability of z greater than or equal to 1.23, we do, because the, the, the areas under that is 1, we just need to do 1 minus 0 0.8907 and we get 0 0.1093. So that's nice and simple. <coughs> Let's do another one. So given 
z is normal distribution of 0, mean 0, standard deviation 1, find the probability is 1.4 is less than or equal to z is less than 1.7 and it's correct to three decimal places. So let's draw this again. Oh, that's terrible. So we've got 0 0.4 and 1.7. And let's do this in a different colour so it shows up nicely. So this here is the area that we're interested in for the probability. <coughs> so firstly we want to find sigma 1.7. So let's go back to our table, and it's not on, it's cut off because I didn't get, the, the table's really, really big, and there's not enough room. So you would go down, find your 1.7, and then read off the value. And because it's 1.70, there's no other decimal place, it'll be this column here. Um, so sigma 1.7 would be 0 0.9554. And we want the sigma for 0 0.4, we can do that one. It's 0 0.4 and it's 0, so it's 0 0.6554. Oops, what have I written there? Let's just fix that. Sigma 0 0.4 is 0 0.6554. So the probability um, between 0.4 and 1.7 is going to be the probability of z is less than 1.7 minus the probability that z is less than 0.4 which is our, sig our, our, still sigma, our phi function, 1.7 minus phi 0 0.4, which is this, take away this, which is 0 0.300. <coughs> um, now, The tables, let's see the tables here, they don't show that, they start at zero, they don't show values for minus, although I have seen them online, but um, typically they don't, they don't have the negative values, but that doesn't matter because of the symmetry of the function. So let's look at And draw it nicer. Yes, and let's look. We've got here's our zero, and we're going to do some value of z of b, and we'll just shade this in. There we go. Shaded that in. <coughs> so phi b is equal to the probability <coughs> that z is less than or equal to b. So less than or equal to b. And phi b um, and 1 minus phi b is going to be equal to the probability of z greater than or equal to b, which makes sense. That would be this part here, 1 minus phi b. Now let's look at uh, 
if we had a negative number. You just have to be careful with the negative numbers because you need to just be careful for the inequality. So let's do minus a. And this time we're interested in this area here. So this time, if we have phi a, that's going to be equal to the probability of z <coughs> being greater than or equal to minus a. Um, so if you think about, so think about if a is equal to b here. Um, you can see the areas are the same. Because it's minus b, values of z greater than minus are the all these ones here. Because of the because of the minus. So psi. So one minus psi, a, is equal to the probability of z less than or equal to minus a. So this little area over here. <coughs> so let's let's look at um, an example to pull some numbers out. So say we had psi 0.11 and we looked at our table and we found out that was 0.5438. So this tells us four different probabilities. Let's just pretend that, that this 0.11 is actually the value of b. This tells us that the probability that z is less than or equal to 0 0.11 is equal to 0 0.5438. So this area here. It also tells us that the probability that z is greater than or equal to 0 0.11 is equal to 1 minus um, 0 0.5438, which is 0 0.4562, so this area here. It also tells us the probability that z is greater than or equal to minus 0 0.11 is equal to 0 0.5438. So this area here. And logically, it tells us the probability that z is less than or equal to minus 0 0.11 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.5438, which is 0 0.4562. So this little area here. So I hope that makes sense. Now this is understanding this little principle and being able to flip the, 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 the inequality signs round is going to be quite important for the next wee bit. Um, <coughs> and because um, we're going to do some, val some examples where z is going to be negative. So let us do that now. Given that z is normal distribution, mean zero, variance one. So when you see this, you know you're going to be using those tables, okay? When you see this here, you're going to be thinking, I need the tables. Find the probability that minus one is less than or equal to z is less than 2.115. So we draw, our t uh, we draw our little um, graph so we can see what's happening. So we've got minus 1 here. And we've got 2.115. And so it's this area 
here. So the probability that Z is less than 2.115 is going to be sigma, not sigma, it's by 2.115 and we can look that up on the table. I'm not going to go back and look that up. Um, actually, I might do that. So 0 0.2, 1, so it's here, so you have this one, <coughs> and then you would be adding, it's 1 from here, so you would be looking along to here to add um, 0 0.004. Um, just close that way. So, what you would get would be um, zero point nine eight two eight. Now we need the probability that Z is greater than. So the probability that um if you think about the probability of less than minus one here is going to be equal to the same as one oops that's a one minus phi for one. And that would give us this probability here. So the probability that we're between minus one, right, less than two point one one five. is going to be our phi 2.115 minus this. So 1 minus, which is 0 0.98 two eight plus one point eight four one three minus one and that comes out at zero point eight two four and so let's do another one where we're going to be doing the inverse. So we've got <coughs> Z is a normal distribution, 0 and 1. <coughs> Find... <coughs> oh, excuse me. The value of A such that the probability that Z is less than A equals 0 0.9072. Um, one of the nippy things with these questions is making sure you write the big long decimals down properly. So, we've got 0 0.90, 0, 0 0.9072. Now we want to find a value close to that in our table. So let's look for 0 0.9, so here's 0 0.9 and 0 0.90, there's 0 0.6 and 0 0.8, so we're kind of in between here and here. So we've got 1.32 is probably our closest. So we'll write that down. So 
rid of that just now. So 0 0.9066 is equal to sigma 1.32. Okay. Now, A must be equal to 1.32. 3.2 plus something else. So our value, so we've got our, we want this value, we want 0 0.9072. If we take away 0 0.09, 0 0.9 Zero six six. So I'm getting all my zeros and nines and everything muddled up. Um, we get zero point zero 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 six. So let's go and have a look at our table. So we had one point three two, and let's go along here and find where it says add six. So here's add six, and we come up to here and we get a three. Um, wait a minute, I think I've done that wrong. 1.03. Coming along here, add 6. It's add 4, sorry, I went to the wrong column. So we want to <coughs> add 0 0.00. So the add four bit is remember it's in we have to add and put into the right position in our decimal, so that will give us one point three two four. Um, and if you've got it in the calculator, you you can use it with um. If you've got a calculator, you that has that function, you can use that. But that is how to do it from the table. Um. And as you just saw, it maybe use a ruler just to make sure you can keep track of the lines um, because it can get a bit fiddly. Um, let's get rid of that. And we want to do one more question. So given Z is a normal distribution with 0 and 1, find B such that probability of z greater than or equal to b is equal to 0 0.7713. Um, now, if you look here, that tells us b is negative. So, Here is our minus b, and here's our values. So this here must be equal to 0 0.7713. <coughs> so we can flip this around because of the symmetry, and we can have our plus b here, and that will also be equal to that. So for sigma z less than or equal to our value for b, it must equal 0 0.7713. So let's go back to our tables. Um, 0 Seven seven. So we've got zero point seven. It's round about here. So we've got a zero point seven and four. So we've got zero point seven four. And we want to see. 
what are we going to add? So our value for b must be this. Add something gives us this value here. 0.774 and we need to go over to here. So what's what we're going to add to? So we do 0 0.7713 minus 0 0.74 and we find we're going to need 0 0.0009. And so we find where is that in the column? Zero four add nine up here's three. So I want to add three, so it's going to be oops, three. Let's get rid of that. So because This value here, B is going to be minus 0 0.743 because remember we've got this value here. <coughs> I should really have called that A because we're doing we we'll call that one A. Um, so A would be that and then B would be the negative one, just so you don't get confused with the signs. So <laughs> that was very long and with lots of zeros and dots and numbers and so I hope it wasn't too confusing.